with and with that, Randy, I'll open up for you to kind of kick us off here. All right. First of all, Michael Smoose, welcome. It's uh, great to meet you in person as I did a few moments ago and see you on Zoom. And I am Randy Brochu, not Aaron Gaberman, um, although I do thank Aaron for letting me use his computer so we could talk to Coach Nof <laughs> about signing day, which I know Nof is uh, always exciting. You welcome members, uh, the, the, the future stars of the Pioneers, the Sacred Heart football family. Um, and I know it's a, a little bit different this year, but still, I know you got to be excited about the guys that you're bringing in. We are, you know, uh, we're able to sign, uh, right now we have 11 kids signed and we're waiting for one more to come in. Um, but we are, we're excited about the 12 kids that we're going to add to the Sacred Heart football family. Um, we did a great job. I think my coaches did, um, when you aren't able to go out on the road and see them at the high school in the spring and you weren't able to evaluate them live at any camps this summer. We didn't have them on campus for any official or unofficial visits this fall. I think the coaches did a great job doing as many Zoom calls, phone calls, and text messages as they could to get to know these kids and kind of find out what they're about and what their character is and how they fit in the Sacred Heart. And I think uh, I think we hit it out of the park with the kids that we've got committed, and we're pretty happy about it. Uh, like I said, we're still waiting on one more, um, and this will kind of be the first wave. And then. Uh, We'll take some time and start looking at things and see if we have any more spots open for February for the second signing period. But right now we're really happy with the guys that we got and uh, we're excited and can't wait to get those guys on campus. Before we visit the, uh, the new guys, just want to ask how the, how the returners are doing. And obviously, you know, this, this period in history has disrupted everybody's life. Uh, how the boys doing there, you know, it was hard. I'm not going to lie. There was a lot of disappointment this fall. Um, obviously it was good to have them all back on campus, you know, from August 31st, right up to like November 3rd or 5th, I think it was when we, when we had to go uh, virtual, it was good to have them here. It was good to see everybody. And I think everybody um, was happy to be back and excited to be around each other. Um, but it was disappointing to know like, okay, it's Saturday and you know, everybody's kind of, at home or doing something different instead of getting ready for a game. And, you know, I kept sitting there saying, well, it's Thursday today. We'd be going through our final uh, preparations for whoever we were playing that week, or this is what we would be doing on a Friday at this time. And, you know, football coaches are a creature of habit. I mean, you could, you could pretty much tell what we're doing by the time in the day of the week in the fall. And uh, you know, the kids, it, I think it was tough on them. You know, we, we were able to lift four days a week. Um, we practiced three days, three days a week. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And, you know, we had to follow guidelines by the state and by our athletic trainers and the school's policy. And, you know, first we started off in pods of 10. Uh, after two or three weeks, we were able to increase the pods of 50. Uh, then we had to, you know, take a little bit of a break twice. Uh, then we were able to increase our team practices. We're a full team. And basically we were only able to get about four or five practices in as a full team before we had to go virtual. And, you know, it was good to see the kids practice and it was good to have them together and working together, but it really wasn't the same as you were together as a team preparing like you would on a Tuesday, uh, a day of a Wednesday practice, a Thursday practice. So, you know, I know a lot of kids were disappointed. And then you get into the fact that if somebody tested positive, you know, we had to do the contact tracing or contact tracing and find out who they were with and what pod they were in. And, you know, a lot of kids were coming and going, you know, they were out for 10 days or 14 days, then they'd come back and then they'd find out, well, maybe they practice a week and then they were in another, you know, tracing element. And it just, it was constant coming and going all fall, every practice. And I know a lot of kids missed it. Um, if they weren't able to practice for a week or two, or they were the ones that were getting sick. I mean, they were disappointed. Uh, I think they, the saving grace was that we were able to lift and be together as a team as much as we could four days a week. And we were able to practice the other three, uh, knowing that the NEC was trying to play fall sports in the spring and have some form of a fo football schedule was something that we could look forward to and kept the kids spirits up a little bit and kept them going. And I, and I generally think um, they just like being around each other. They like working together. They like football. They love being around the coaches and, that was the positive. The negative was there wasn't games on Saturday and we weren't in our normal routine, but so be it. it. It is what it is. We made the best of it that we could. We couldn't control the outcome. So we had to make do with what was, you know, what was given to us and make the best of that situation. And hopefully going forward, like I said, we're ready to start um, practice hopefully February 1st with the first game being March 7th. 
Well, there certainly is hope. And, you know, we, we're starting to see that light a little bit at the end of uh, this historic tunnel. And hopefully March 7th, you are out there and we'll have spring football will take on a whole new meaning because it'll <laughs> count and you'll be playing for a championship um, and, 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 and an NEC title. The time when you're usually watching the Yankees get ready in spring training. I know you, the Yankee fan that you are. Uh, but coach, we'll look a little bit past that and this season and to the long-term future of Pioneer football. You're a D guy. You want to start with the new guys you're bringing in, you and Coach sure. Cook on defense? Uh, yeah, you know, we, we're able to get right now, we got five kids committed on the defensive side of the ball. Um, I believe we have three defensive backs. Um, we have one defense, two defensive, well, one defensive lineman and then an outside slash rush and force committed. Um, I think all guys fill a void that we have, and we're looking to add some depth on our defensive line and our rush and linebacker position. Uh, with the three defensive backs we got coming in, obviously we have some kids. Um, they're going to be leaving shortly within a year or two with graduation or the use of their eligibility being up. So we needed to add a few more pieces to that. But I, I do like where we're at. Obviously, Coach Cook runs a lot of different schemes. Um, he's a pressure guy, and there's a lot of guys coming from different angles and from different spots. I think the kids that we have are going to fit right into the scheme of things. You know, obviously we don't care how big a kid is. We're more interested in how fast is he, how strong is he, and how hard does he play? And, and I think all five of those kids on defense fit the mold of what Coach Cook's trying to do um, in terms of the scheme and, and getting the kids to believe. I, I do think that at times, you know, we might not be as talented as some of the other schools that we play. We might not be as big as some of those schools, but I'll tell you one thing, our kids will be ready to play and coach cook has them playing hard. He's uh, he's a mastermind of putting kids in the position to succeed. He gets them to play hard and that's half the battle on defense, playing hard, run into the ball and just be relentless. And, you know, his, his motto is, you know, shoot defense versus everybody. And that's what the kids believe in the five kids coming in, hopefully will fit in perfectly with what we're doing. Um, I'm still anxious to see some of the kids from last year's class. You know, we, we weren't able to see a lot of them this fall. Uh, some of the things that we did see, we liked. Uh, some kids still have some, a ways to go, but, you know, in defense of them, they didn't get much time with us this summer. You know, there was no camp. Um, and some kids missed some practices because of the COVID and the tracing. So I, I like who we added so far. Um, there's obviously going to be some pieces coming and going. We might be able to add a few more come February, but uh, those kids that we brought in so far on the defensive side of the ball are going to, fit right into what coach go, uh, what coach cook does and what he um, plans for other people. Well, I don't know if you'll be bringing the money bank back <laughs> on defense this year. We loved that last year. I'm sure he'll have that in, uh, in the plans. Most kids do. And uh, it's something our kids, you know, hang their hat on and it's, and it's great. You know, people have asked me in the past, you know, what do you think of the money bank? I think Dan would ask me that in the past. And I'd be like, listen, if the kids believe in it and they're playing hard and they want to be a part of it, more power to them. And I'm all for it. You want to switch over to the offensive side of the ball now before we maybe open it up to questions. Sure. Um, I'm just kind of reading this release right now. Joseph Dixon, you're bringing in at the running back position who did some, uh, made some noise up at Niagara Falls. Um, and you've got a young man, Michael Coffey, who's yep. uh, going to play college football right here at home, just down the road. He, he grew uh, up at Wilton. He, I think he's a great tight end. You know, uh, I know uh, he didn't have the senior year that he wanted and he got banged up a little bit, but uh we were recruiting him since last spring, and uh, we love his size, 6'4", 230. Um, he's a tough kid. He's strong. And this kid's uh, – he's only going to get bigger and stronger, and, and we can't wait to get him here. Uh, like I said, he's a kid from down the road that uh, will fit in perfectly with what we do in our offense and uh, moving our tight ends around and sometimes playing two or three tight ends in certain packages. Uh, we were able to bring in three offensive linemen. Coach Gunning Smith did a great job finding three guys um, on our offensive line that we're going to need to help us some big kids, uh, mean, tough kids that, you know, we want, we want to run the ball. Obviously we want to run the ball and, and our quarterback's got to be athletic and be able to run and make good decisions. Uh, the offensive line that we, we have committed for next year, I think we'll do a great job and we'll, we'll add depth. And I can see a couple of them actually playing early in their career. Uh, we had the quarterback from Maryland, uh, a mayor, and again, you talk about an athletic kid that can throw the ball down the field uh, that can hurt you with running it or throwing it. Uh, that's a kid that we really think would fit our system and, and come in and, and give us some depth there and, and compete for a position. You know, uh, Mark, 
Marquez has two years left, possibly three. Um, great kid, smart kid. He only saw him three times last year at the end of the season. Um, but again, we, we got high hopes for him and, uh, he did a great job when we saw what we had this, this fall with him and, uh, he'll have two or three years left and hopefully, you know, the quarterback Amir can come in and, uh, and do a great job and, and compete for playing time and push him as well. You know, that's what we want. And that's what we're getting. Uh, the kid Dixon. Yeah. You talked about, he made some noise out in Niagara. He's a good back. Uh, I don't think you can have enough running backs. They can play variety of positions and they also help on the special team. So, like I said, I, I feel good about who we added on the offensive side of the ball. You know, Coach Gardner does a great job with those guys and putting them the same thing in, in position to be successful. Uh, the kids that we have coming in can vie for playing time early in their career, but it's going to be up to them. How, how quick they pick up the schemes, how well they develop. Are they coming in ready to play or are they just not ready yet because they're a little bit young and, and immature? So it really depends upon how they grasp things offensively and how hard they work in the weight room and getting better and learning the offense. But uh, we're excited about the kids we have, you know. Um, it is what it is, and I'm glad those kids chose Sacred Heart. I couldn't be happier. I think they'll fit for what we do and who we are, and uh, I'm excited about the future. We'll open it up to questions, uh, but I do, you know, the old academic services person in me, the role I used to serve here with Tammy Petroselli at Sacred Heart, wants to ask um, about – these young men and if they're watching right now what your message is to them as far as the what matters the most about being a student athlete and that's of course succeeding academically um so they can thrive in their future and also be on the field and be ready to produce as football players yeah you know i i met with all of them in the past two weeks and met with their parents and them over zoom calls and you know i told them i said you know you're our responsibility for the next four years and my goal for you is to obviously graduate within four years with a degree from Sacred Heart University. Um, that's our first goal and that we're gonna be here to help you through everything. Listen, it's not gonna be perfect in four years. You're gonna have ups and downs, but my goal as the head coach is to make sure you graduate. The coach is gonna make sure you become a better football player. You're gonna be doing community service. We want you involved in different activities on campus, different clubs, because you're only here for four years and you gotta take advantage of the opportunities given to you. And I said this to him as well, you know, Every kid that's come through Sacred Heart that has enrolled since 2010 has left with at least one NEC championship. And, yeah. and that's a pretty good stat good uh, considering that, you know, we've had some success lately. So I told him, I said, you're coming here to get your education, to graduate in four years, become a better football player, improve yourself on and off the field and leave at least with one NEC championship, if not more. And those are our goals coming in. And we're going to have expectations that you have to follow. Um, protocols that our student athletes are going to be held accountable. And uh, if you follow those things, you take advantage of the opportunities given to you, you're going to have a very successful career, both on and off the field at Sacred Heart. That's great stuff, coach. I'll uh, ask Michael now. I see Justin DeVellis is on the call and, and others. So I want to you know, turn it over to Michael to see if we want to open up to uh, Justin or any other questions. Yeah, Justin, uh, you got anything for coach? Outstanding. Is it okay if I go first? Yes. <laughs> um hey guys thanks for having me on um reading a lot of stuff about signing day today different uh spots and and you know you you touch on all the colleges and in something in particular that stood out to me is uh you know UConn they wanted to emphasize you know speed they they, they said that a lot Randy Edsel said that a lot building a more dynamic team uh coach my question for you is um and forgive me if you you hit on it a little bit but uh, was there one particular emphasis uh, you wanted out of this class? And do you think you were successful in uh, achieving that? I mean, did you achieve what you wanted to get this year out of, out of this class? You know, we go into it as coaches saying, okay, we're positionally, we look at what are our needs? Who's leaving? Where do we need to add depth? Where do we need to increase our talent? And, you know, you can look at those things, but I think the biggest thing for us is, does he fit the sacred heart mold? Does he fit into what we do? Um, is he going to be dynamic in the weight room? You know, is he going to be a good student that goes to class? Is he going to represent sacred heart university in the best way he can? Is he a tough kid that plays hard? That's not afraid of work. Then he's our, then he is exactly what we want. Um, I've gone, you know, we've gone out and we've gotten the kids that are maybe a step too slow, an inch too short. Uh, maybe nobody want them. I mean, you know what? They come here, they play with a chip on their shoulder. 
Coach Fee's done a phenomenal job with our weight room and developing kids' bodies over the course of four years. The coaches put them in great position to win. And if they have that attribute that they play hard, they're physical, and they're committed to being the best, we've won with those kids. And that's kind of what we're looking for. You can take a kid that's very highly recruited and very talented, but if he doesn't fit who we are and he doesn't believe in some of the things that we preach as a program and as a team, then he's not going to fit here. And there's no sense trying to make it or take that kid if he's not going to fit into what we do. I want kids that want to be here, that want to work, that love their teammates and believe in working hard and hard work will, you know, outplay and outwork any other team that's talented that's out there. Outstanding. Uh, thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask another question, just one more. Um, and forgive me if it's uh, maybe stupid. Um, as far as March goes, right, uh, are we still hearing positive things about uh, that that happening? And how does that – I mean, is that a – these guys that are signing here, I mean, does that, is it in a way good, a positive, if you end up playing in March and then, you know, these guys are just signing, like where, where do they fit in uh, if you guys play in the, in the spring? And um, Right now it's all positive. Um, the NEC is putting a plan moving forward that we're going to start football or, you know, fall sports in the spring. And football wise, I know we would start practice February 1 and with the game starting March 7th. Uh, that's in the works. It's all been positive. Everybody's on board with it. Um, as far as the kids on the team, I think it's great for them. The kids that are here, that are playing, they're going to get an opportunity to play four or five games. You really don't want to go 18 months without playing a single college football game. Obviously, if you're playing the spring, you're not going to be playing 10 or 11 games, but four or five games in the spring to have some form of competition and go against somebody else is great. Um, the freshmen or the kids that we did sign, uh, they won't be here until next August anyway. So, you know, obviously they'll be able to come up on campus and watch games, but that's all they'll be able to do. I don't think playing in the spring is going to affect them. The biggest thing for the incoming freshmen, the kids we signed are that they'll be able to start camp in August with us and go through a regular preseason camp where you do nothing but football for three and a half, four weeks. And I think that's, that's something that the freshmen we have now who will be sophomores next year have to look forward to also. I mean, think about it. We didn't have that with this freshman class. We started practice, you know, September 7th, went three days a week. They didn't have all of camp. So they missed about five weeks worth of, you know, single practices, walkthroughs, meetings, the whole camp regimen. And uh, the kids that we signed, again, they can't do anything again until August. But I think they'll be able to see what we're all about a little bit better uh, if we do play in the spring, which everybody's hopes are and that we plan on playing. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Randy, unless you got something else, I think we're good. I'm good if you are. It's just good to see you guys and uh, hear your voices. And, Coach, I look forward to hopefully seeing you in person a lot more in March. I uh, wish you great health and, you know, for every for the family, for the football family, um, and everybody in your life. And yeah, thanks. Same here. I, I miss seeing you too, Randy. I wish you were uh, right upstairs every day of the week so uh, we could chat and uh, – you know, have some of the times that we used to have, but I look forward to working with you this spring and can't wait to hear you back on the, back on the radio, the TV, whatever it is, because usually when we use highlight clips, it's obviously going to be your voice over the course of our clips. So like I've always said, the voice of the pioneers, man. Hey, 